Hello, and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at topics under the standard 3.2 in 8th grade, and we're also going to be looking under topics in the Study Island lesson Pythagorean Theorem. And as we're going through these, make sure that you're taking notes, because there's going to be one main formula that you're going to need to know, and that's Pythagorean Theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so you're going to want to have written down what the a, b, and c mean, so that when we go when you go to try these problems on your own you'll have something to refer to and if it goes too fast while you're just taking those notes just pause and rewind so that you can stay caught up and you can also pause at the beginning of the question work the problem out and then go ahead and press play and then you can watch how I do the problem and see if we get the same answer and if not then you can see where you made your mistakes and hopefully learn from that and do better next time so I'm so glad that you're joining us and let's go ahead and take some notes so for every question in this section, we are going to be using Pythagorean Theorem. Pythagorean Theorem is commonly known as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The a and b represent the lengths of the legs of a right triangle. This only works for a right triangle. If you don't know that this, you have one corner, one angle that's 90 degrees, you can't use Pythagorean Theorem. But when you do know that, you can use it as much as you want. So the legs are always the sides that are touching that right angle that make the right angle. You can think of it as the right angle symbol points to the legs. And so you would, those are your leg lengths. You would square the lengths and then add them together. And that's going to be the same as the hypotenuse length being squared. And so your hypotenuse is always your longest side and always the side across from the right angle. It doesn't touch the right angle, it's across from it. So these, this problem here, they're telling us that side P is 28 centimeters, side R is 45 centimeters, and it wants to know what is the length of Q. So when you're doing these problems, I highly recommend that you write down and draw a right triangle and label the sides so that you can see it. And so that makes it a lot easier to visually see, okay, which sides here are my legs and which ones are my hypotenuse. So here, P and R are going to be my legs because they make the right angle. So that means when I'm using A squared plus B squared equals C squared, 28 and 45 are going to be my legs. So I'm going to have 28 squared plus 45 squared equals C squared. And so to solve this, I'm going to have to go over here and do 28 times 28. And remember, squared means you multiply it times itself, not 28 times 2. You'll get, it, you'll get the problem completely wrong if you do 28 times 2. And you'll break a million mathematicians' hearts. So make sure you do 28 times itself. So 28 times 28. And so you'll have to work that out. And when you get it all worked out, it's going to be 784. And then 45 times 45 is 2,025, and that still equals the C squared. And so then I'm going to have to go and add these two numbers together, and it's going to give me 2,809, and that equals C squared. And so now I'm going to have to think about what number multiplied times itself is going to give me 2,809. Well, thankfully... They give me choices. It's multiple choice. So I have to think about, is it going to be 49 squared? So I could go over here and try 49 times 49. Is it going to be 53 squared? So I could go over here and try 53 times 53 and see if that gives me 2,809. And that one actually does. So that means that 53 is going to be the length of the hypotenuse, making C my final answer. Once again here, they're giving us some side lengths. Here they tell us that X is the length of square root of 6, and Y is the square root of 12, and it wants to know what is the length of Z. So once again, I see that side X and Y are making my right triangle. So those are going to be my legs, so that means I'm going to have... 6 squared plus the square root of 6 squared plus the square root of 12 squared 
And that's going to equal either c squared or you could put z squared there, whichever letter you prefer to use. And so lots of people, they see these roots being squared and they don't know what to do. And when in fact, it's pretty easy. The, just like multiplying and division are opposites, square roots and squaring are opposite operations. So that means that they just undo each other and cancel out. So that means here, both the root and the square are going to cancel out in both numbers. And I'm going to be left with just 6 plus 12 equals c squared. And that got to be fairly easy. So here, 6 plus 12 is 18. 18 equals c squared. Now this time, I look here, and they all have square roots in their answer. So that means that this is not going to be a perfect square. There's no number out there that if you multiply it times yourself, it's going to get to 18. Because if you think about 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25. Well, 16 and 25, one's smaller, one's bigger, so that means there's no number that I can multiply to get 18. So that means I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides, because once again, the square root and the square are the opposite operations, so that cancels it out so that I'm left with just C. And this time, c is just the square root of 18, and that's going to be my answer. It looks kind of funny, but that's your answer, which is d. Okay, in this problem here, they're telling me that y is 7.5, and z is 19.5, and it wants to know what is the length of x. So this time I'm given a length of a leg and a length of the hypotenuse and I'm looking for the other leg. So this is going to look like this. It's going to look a little bit different. I'm going to have 7.5 squared plus b squared because I don't know a leg equals that 19.5 squared. So I'm going to have to go ahead and I'm going to have to go off to the side and work out what 7.5 times 7.5 is. And once you work that out, go ahead and pause and try it out yourself. You're going to get 56.25 plus b squared. And then you're going to have to go off to the side and do also what is 19.5 times 19.5 to get 19.5 squared. So go ahead and pause and work that out yourself. And you should have gotten an answer of 380 and a quarter, 0.25. And so then to continue solving this, since I have this 56.25 being added to my variable, I'm going to have to subtract it from both sides. And they cancel out. And I'm left with b squared equals... 324. And so this time I look at my answers and they're all whole numbers. So that means this has to be a perfect square number. So that means either 17 times 17 is going to give me 324. 21 times 21 is going to give me 324. 15 times 15 is going to give me 324. Or 18 times 18 is going to give me 324. And so when I try all those out, so go ahead and pause and see which one you could get. When I take 18 times 18, that's going to give me 324, which is going to make D my final answer. So here they give us a parallelogram with some dimensions, and they want to know what is H, the height of the parallelogram. And they give us this formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared to use. Well, I'm like, well, this is a parallelogram. It's not a right triangle. How could I use that? Well, there are right triangles in this parallelogram. So I have the H and here, this here is going to be this H also and a parallelogram because it's a parallelogram then I know that if this side here is 15 then the side opposite it is also 15. So that means if I can figure out this little piece here then I'm good to go. Well, in the top here, I know that from here to here is 19. 
and this whole piece here is 28. So if I subtract out the 19, I'll be left with what this little piece is. So 28 minus 19 is 9. So that's going to make that little piece 9. So now I have my right triangle. I know the hypotenuse, I know one leg, and I'm looking for the other leg, so that means I can use Pythagorean theorem. So here I'm going to have a squared plus, I know my other leg is 9, so I'm going to have 9 squared. Then the side that's across from the right triangle is 15, my hypotenuse, so this is going to be 15 squared. So then I'm going to go ahead and square each of those numbers as my next step. 9 squared is 81. And then 15 squared is 225. And if you don't have that one memorized, then you would have to go off to the side here and do 15 times 15. And then my next step to continue solving for the leg is to subtract 81 from both sides. These 81s are going to cancel and just leave me with a squared. 225 minus 81 is 144. And so if you don't recognize what perfect square that is, what number you multiply times itself to get 144, then you would have to go over here and look at your answers and do, okay, what's 17 times 17? Does that give me 144? No. So what's 6 times 6? That's 36. That's not 144. What's 24 times 24? Well, that's way bigger than 144. 12 times 12, that is 144. So that's going to make D my final answer. So here they give us this circle. And they give us this formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that means I know I'm going to need to use this formula. So I'm going to want to look for a right triangle. And here there are two. And it wants to know what is the diameter. Well, if I can find a radius, then that will give me the diameter. Because I can just double it. Because two radiuses make the diameter. So the side of each, the legs here of each of this rectangle is a radius. So I can do radius squared plus radius squared, or r squared plus r squared, equals 11 squared. And because these two are the same variable, because I know that they're the same length, I can have that twice. I don't have to know one or the other like I did in the last problems. So here I have two r squareds when I add those together. And that's going to equal 11 squared, which is 121. So I have multiplication here between the 2 and the r, so to undo the multiplication I'm going to divide both sides by 2, which is going to leave me with r squared equals, and as I look over here in my answers I see that they leave it in fraction form. So I'm not going to want to actually do that division, I'm just going to want to leave it as 121 over 2, and then to undo my Squaring, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root of both sides, the square root and the square are going to cancel. And that's going to leave me with just r. And I knew this time that I had to take the square root of both sides because instead of looking for the perfect square number because of my answers, but also because this is a fraction, so it's not going to have an even perfect square number, a whole number for perfect square. So this is going to leave me with r equals the square root of 121 over 2, which is going to make, so this is what the length of a radius is. The question asks for what's the diameter. I can't forget that at the end and just circle A because A is not the correct answer. The diameter is 2 times the radius. So if I take 2 times this, that's what my answer here, C, says. So my final answer here is going to be C. In this section, you're also going to see problems where they give you two points on a coordinate plane and ask you what is the distance going to be. And so you're wondering, how can I use Pythagorean theorem here? Well, because this is on a coordinate plane, you can draw in and make a right triangle, just like this. And so here is my right triangle. So you can have graph paper on your test and you can also have it at home. And you could go ahead and draw this so that you can actually 
um, count it out a little bit easier too. Or at least write down the right triangle so that you have something to look at. And then here, the distance between A and B is this blue line. That's going to be my hypotenuse. So to find the lengths of my legs, I'm just going to go ahead and count them. How many squares? So here's one, two, three. So this leg is three. And then I count my other leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my other leg there is seven blocks long. And I'm looking for my hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and like you're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the a amount of my legs is 3 squared plus my other leg is 7 squared equals c squared. So 3 squared is 9, 7 squared is 49, and I go ahead and add those together and I get 58, and that equals c squared. And if I look at my answers, my only whole number here is 7, and 7 squared is 49. So that means that this one probably isn't going to have a nice whole number as its, per as its square root. So I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. And that cancels out this square. So then I'm going to have so the square root of 58 is what's going to equal C, which is going to make D my final answer. Here's another problem where I need to find the distance between A and B. And so to do that, I'm going to want to create a right triangle so that I can use the Pythagorean theorem, just like that. So once again, I'm going to count the length of my legs, one, two, three squares. And then I'm going to count my other leg, one, two, three, it's also three squares. And then I'm going to look for the hypotenuse. So to set up Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to take three squared plus three squared because those are my legs. And I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So I'm looking for C. So 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have 9 plus 9 is 18 equals C squared. And so I look over here and the only number that I have that's a whole number is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, which is not 18. So that means I'm going to have to go ahead and take the square root of both sides to find my final answer. So these cancel. And I'm left with the square root of 18 equals C. Well, if I look over here, the square root of 18 isn't a choice. So I'm going to have to take this just a little bit further. And I'm just thinking about, okay, what number times something can I, well, not, what perfect square number can I divide into 18? So if I think about that, I have 9 times 2. So that means the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 is the same as the square root of 18. And so if I simplify that, the square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. And then I still have that times square root of 2. And that's what C, that's the same as the square root of 18, just simplified. So that's going to make C my final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.